This is intended to be a brief overview of the topic of how to deal with repeated measures. In other words, what to do when the outcome variable is measured at multiple time points. I'll intentionally be oversimplifying a bit. How to proceed in large part depends on the answer to two questions. First, do you want to summarize the outcomes for each patient by a single number? If so, what you'll be trying to do is to reduce the dimensionality of the data. Second, do you have complete data measured at the same set of time points? If so, the classical procedures for repeated measure analysis can be applied. I'll begin with the first question first. This slide illustrates how the process of boiling down multiple measurements into a single number operates. There are six measures of quality of life for the patient in question. For, con for concreteness, we'll assume the scale ranges from zero for death to one for perfect health. The six measurements are summarized by the area under the curve. The greater this area, the better the quality of life. In fact, the area under the curve actually is sometimes used as an outcome in palliative care studies. The total area under the curve would increase either with longer survival or with greater quality of life. The emphasis on quality of life only, the area under the curve can be scaled by dividing by survival time. One thing you'll notice about area under the curve is it doesn't require that patients be observed at identical time points. Moreover, it can still be calculated with the present and missing values. This slide lists some other types of summary measures. I'll have the property that they can be calculated for patients with different numbers of observations and with different timing of the observations. The first two summary measures, that is, area under the curve, the slope of the line, regressing the outcome y over a period of time, use every single data point in the calculation. The others don't, but still might come into consideration a good representation of the construct being studied. One final note on summary measures, and indeed on any analysis that follows patients over time, uh, and that's that it's always good to check that the summary measures still make sense in the presence of sensor, especially if patients are censored by death. In this slide, the time period of interest is fixed, for example, 12 months after the diagnosis of disease. For patients that die before 12 months of follow-up, the area under the curve retains the correct interpretation. That is, there's no contribution to that area beyond the point of death. The area under the curve illustration avoids a problem that's sometimes seen, especially in the reporting of laboratory data. For example, suppose a toxic intervention is being compared with the usual medical management. Many more patients that receive the innovation die, but among the few patients that survive, the quality of life is excellent. Plotting the mean quality of life over time among survivors only would capture the excellent quality of life among the few survivors, but it wouldn't illustrate the fact that many more of the patients receiving the toxic intervention will die. The stacked bar graphs in the slide, which assume that patients are observed at comparable time points, are one way around this problem. The simplest version of an analysis that uses summary measures is a simple style. The data set with one record per patient with a summary measure such as area under the curve is the outcome variable for those patients. In essence, once the summary measure is calculated, we forget that it's been derived from multiple data points and treat it as a single number, in other words, like any other outcome. The downside to this approach is that it treats the data from each patient <coughs> as being equally believable. For example, suppose the summary measure is the slope of a line representing the concentration of a drug over time. The slope can be calculated for the adherent patient with 12 measurements, one per hour, and equally well for the less adherent patients that has baseline measures at baseline 6 hours and 12 hours. One way around this problem is to limit the analysis to patients that meet a certain threshold for data quality. For example, at least 8 of the 12 scheduled measurements are present. Another way is to include all the data, but to give greater weight to the patients with higher data quality. In fact, all of the statistical techniques that we study in this course have extensions that can be applied to patients with different weights. Precisely how to do so is outside the scope of the course and is something you'd want a statistician to do. Statisticians love to argue about which weights to use. If you have complete data on a small number of data points, the techniques of classical repeated measures analysis can come into consideration. To understand their logic, let's begin with the simplest possible design that of two time points, as per a pre-post design of an intervention designed to lower systolic blood pressure. 
Column with post-intervention SVP for the first six patients is quite variable, with values ranging from 100 to 150. However, most of this variation is due to the heterogeneity of patients at baseline, as, as illustrated in the leftmost column. When the change scores are analyzed, the signal doesn't change. In other words, the intervention appears to lower systolic pressure by 5 to 10 units, but the level of noise drops dramatically. The benefit of having each patient service there under control is greatest when patients are heterogeneous, but the impact of the intervention being studied is consistent. The previous data set had one record per patient and multiple, uh, multiple columns per patient. If you like, it was short and fat. This slide illustrates another way to arrange the same data. Now it's long and thin, with the predictive variables being patient and time. Moreover, you already know how to analyze such a data array. It's a two-way ANOVA, with patient and time as the predictors. In fact, time is the primary predictor, and patient is a covariate that needs to be controlled for, but is otherwise of secondary interest. Going all the way back to the one-way ANOVA videos, the only complication to this story is that while time is a fixed effect, patient is a random one. And for the purposes of this course, we'll sti we've stipulated that we'll limit our attention to models with fixed effects. The fact that one predictor is fixed and the other is random makes this a mixed model. Mixed models have a few niceties in their interpretation, and you should work with a statistician. But A, you can think about mixed models in the usual sort of way. And B, now you know what a mixed model is, usually something with a data array in a long, thin form organized by patient. The long, thin version of the data array, and the fact that it results in a two-way ANOVA that isn't fundamentally different from what we already know how to perform, provides us with a way to think about techniques for dealing with repeated measures. Within a model that controls for patient, first test whether time matters. If so, the outcome will differ among some of the time frames, and your job is to figure out which pairs of time frames differ. You'd account for multiple comparisons in the usual way. I'll finish with a disclaimer and an observation. The disclaimer is I've glossed over a number of technical details, some of which are important, and this is one of those designs that you'll need to consult with a statistician. The observation is that mixed model is a quite general way to deal with longitudinal data. It has the advantages that it can accommodate missing values and inconsistent measurement schedules, neither of which could be handled by all the classical techniques of repeated measurement analysis. However, nothing in statistics is free. And this extra flexibility comes at the cost of some extra assumptions that are embedded within the framework of the mixed model. Your statistician should be in a position to assess whether these assumptions are reasonable.